I appreciate the Pirate Warriors series for giving me a nice summarized version of the events that occur in the shonen manga One Piece. Even if you're caught up, these are some events that deserve to be remembered. In the newest entry, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, players experience some of the most powerful arcs in the series to date. While it is still very much a Musu style game, Omega Force delivers a quality experience here. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 begins with a bit of a recap. Players will fight through two of the arcs from the previous entry, which might feel like a bit too much considering it will probably take you around two hours until you get to the new arcs. Still, this offers a great way to catch up with the crew as they meet new characters and fight their way through some pretty iconic scenes within the series. The story campaign really picks up after the crew reunites and heads for the new world. This is also where some of the bulk of the Straw Hat Pirates become available to play as. Following these scenes is some of the best moments that I have played in a Pirate Warriors game. Each mission is iconic and the game wastes very little time on fluff. You are constantly racing towards a goal and each arc leaves you wanting more. What's great about One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 is how varied the mission structures are. You aren't asked to simply take over areas of the map, instead the missions are lined up a bit closer to whatever your goal is. Aside from the main missions, there are also sub-missions that can be taken on during an arc. Completing these missions sometimes unlocks new cinematics or adds a new character to your team during the mission. When it comes to fighting? Well, it's a Musu game, so you're going to be doing a lot of it. However, this time around, characters fall into one of four categories, power, sky, technique, and speed. Each style affects how the character plays in a fight, which makes it fun to try them all out. Attacks are tied to two face buttons for a weak and strong attack. A combination of the two will create a different attack pattern. Additionally, each character has four skills tied to a shoulder button to extend combos or take out a large group of enemies. What I enjoyed most about the battle system is how well combos work during fights. It's possible to chain together attacks by rushing towards an enemy after launching them across the field. While this exhausts stamina, it can also be used to juggle enemies in the air, effectively making the combat system a bit more technical. Grunt and commander enemies can be taken out relatively easily. They don't pose any real threat and can sometimes feel like padding on the overall mission. Having to run across the map a third time to take out a group of commanders gets old after the 20th time you do it. Boss fights on the other hand are some of the most difficult encounters in the game. They require to use all the skills that you have acquired as you match up against a tough opponent. These enemies have increased shields that need to be broken before any real damage can be dealt as well as some of their own special attacks. I really like these boss battles in the game especially some of the more arena style fights where it's just you and the enemy. In the later parts of the game, the character combos and actions greatly improve as they grow up. This makes the time that you put into the game worth it as you pretty much watch the Straw Hat crew become more and more powerful. This also makes the game feel less repetitive as you enter later arcs. A large improvement to the series is found in the environments. Structures can be destroyed and there are multiple paths that can alter throughout the mission. Given that the maps are so large in this entry, I think an autosave or checkpoint feature would have been a nice option for this game. Going through a 30 minute mission only to fail because your ally got killed is pretty disheartening as you get sent back to the beginning of the stage. Following missions, characters level up and you're rewarded coins and money for things you did during that mission. These are then used to make characters stronger. Each character has their own growth chart that players can use to upgrade different stats. Additional modes available are free log and treasure log, which unlock throughout the story campaign. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 has some great character models. The developer chose to use 3D models during each scene and not the manga style panels that we are used to in Pirate Warriors 3. This makes the story much more immersive as you witness the highs and lows of the Straw Hat Pirates. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 is a must play for fans of the series, even if you aren't caught up. The game shows us how varied a Musu title can get in terms of mission structure and map design. However, given the small number of playable arcs, it's strange the story would waste time on two arcs that were playable in the previous game. Still, this is one Pirate Warriors adventure that I was happy to go on. Noisy Pixel is giving One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 an 8 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review at NoisyPixel.net. NoisyPixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.